I close the door? This is fun. Hello, this is uh, Five Minutes with an Animal Science PhD student. Uh, this is Bernard. Uh, please tell us about yourself. All right, thank you so much. My name is Bernard Abikusam. I am from Ghana. Uh, that's um, from the central part of Ghana uh, in West Africa. Uh, I studied my uh, undergrad, did my undergrad in animal science from the University of Ghana uh, with a previous degree in uh, uh, associate degree in animal science from the same university. Uh, after onwards, I had a scholarship to study in Netherlands uh, on a pig production technology program organized by the Dutch Fellowship Foundation by the Dutch government, which landed me in Netherlands for me to study for some couple of months to gain more experience in uh, using animals uh, as a tool for human, human mechanisms. Uh, onwards, I just came back to Ghana and I worked with several agencies and industries in Ghana on a freelance basis. And finally, I had another scholarship to study in Portugal on molecular genetics of the bovine species, which also took me some few couple of months in there in Portugal. I really love it when I go to Portugal in the University of Lisbon. So I came down to Ghana again to wrap up with my degree and finally had another scholarship by the Ghana government to study uh, on the Stipendium Hungarian Corps Scholarship, one of the uh, strongest scholarships in the Hungarian system, which landed me in the University of Debrecen, and I focused on animal husbandry and engineering. By this time, my specialization was on quantitative and statistical genetics of the bovine species. So I also finished up in 2019, worked in Hungary for one year, then finally landed myself up at the University of Arkansas, doing my PhD in animal science, focused on swine research specifically on uh, looking at vitamin D metabolism in swine and how it also improves in human health. Wow, what is the, one of the most interesting things that you've learned uh, while studying animal science? Uh, currently, what I'm doing is the most interesting thing that I've ever loved to do in, since my childhood days, uh, trying to use animals as a model to study human diseases. So like, for instance, looking at how vitamin D metabolizes it has a whole lot of positive effect on human system, like looking at where rickets came from. So doing these projects and working on it tediously is one thing that intrigued me a lot and I love to do things of that sort. And also looking at vitamin D, how it correlates with uh, uh, certain infectious diseases and certain chronic diseases such as diabetes and obesity. So these are things that interest me a lot. Wow, as far as your, uh, the study of diabetes, uh, how do you think that this uh, research in animals could help uh, develop a cure for diabetes? Yeah, there is uh, the papers that I've read so far, and papers that have been published online, good papers, scientific papers. You could see clearly that there is a correlation between vitamin D, vitamin D deficiency and diabetes. So meaning that anyone who is people who are more deficient in vitamin D are likely susceptible to diabetes and obese reactions. So looking at this, uh, I asked myself this question, how then can I use vitamin D to be able to solve this kind of problem? And we have different metabolites of vitamin D. We have the 25-hydroxycholiclasferol, we have the 1-alpha 25-hydroxycholiclasferol, which is the active form. But I am currently focusing on the 25-hydroxycholiclasferol and I see this correlation as a very positive tool that could be used to be able to cut this kind of uh, help to reduce this infection or these diseases in the system. So with this at the back of my mind, uh, using swine as the model of study is also very helpful because the swine reproductive system and the swine as a whole in its entirety, uh, it's a very good model for human study, meaning that they have they are almost about 95 or 99 percent human in terms of their organ transplant and everything. So with this in mind and with this species as a study model, it makes it more easier for me to be able to regulate and to be able to relate what I learn into practical use. That's amazing. Um, well, you've tried all around, you've traveled all around the world and more than, you know, most people. Um, what are your plans after uh, you earn your PhD from the University of Arkansas? Yeah, I plan to do a postdoctoral fellowship 
in uh, diabetes, as I said, diabetes and obesity and other musculoskeletal issues like stroke, like stroke and other osteoporotic infection or osteomalacia infections. So with the post dog, the post dog is going to give me high technique and high skill set. That's going to help me to be able to accept a faculty position afterwards so that I can undertake my own personal research based on the fundings that are available to me. So I am planning on going into the uh, academia, first and foremost academia, and also trying to collaborate with other research institutes some, such as like the National Institute of Health, uh, St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, and other stuff like that to be able to uh, bring this research on board and see how best I could use it to solve this, this kind of uh, uh, metabolic diseases and other things that might come up in the future. Wow, that's great. You're doing a lot of good things and you're going to continue doing a lot of good things. Uh, one last question, Bernard. Uh, do you have any advice for uh, international or foreign students who would like to pursue, uh, you know, studying America or animal science or just anything, just uh, studying abroad? Yeah, I would uh, personally, in my own opinion, I think coming to America to study is one of the best things that I have, best decision I have taken in my life reason being that I am, I am exposed to a lot of practical experiences. I'm also being corrected when the need arises by my supervisors and by uh, my superiors who, uh, who are working with me. So one thing that made me, one thing that makes me so happy here is that I have hands on on the job and also aside that there is no language barrier like from people like me my educational background since we're colonized by the british english is our main medium of instructions as compared to the hungarian system whereby the language is more of like a barrier to us so studying in america itself also has exposed me to a wide range of opportunities that could be able to help me harness harness my uh, potential and put them into use the other thing is that a lot of industries a lot of uh, uh, schools and a lot of uh, uh, companies are also ready and willing to accept people of my background into their system that makes it more easier so that I can get more exposure so to me I would say people who wants to pursue programs like animal science PhD and or any other thing biomedical sciences or whatever stuff one thing that they should consider in doing when coming to US is to know the kind of supervisor they are going to work with because that supervisor is the one that's going to guarantee your success in the program like for me, I am personally, I'm very lucky that I, I have gotten that person and aside that I've gotten an assistant to him that is helping me. So I would tell people that they should choose America as their first choice and aside that they should also watch out for the potential supervisors they are going to work out with. Hey, <clears throat> thank you so much, Bernard, for uh, taking uh, some time to speak with me today and good luck in all your future endeavors, sir. Thank you so much.